All right. We're at Watson Springs, which is which is half club for making wood jokes, but it's really a wood science lab. So we've got Richard right here, who is a craftsman. We're going to see his workshop in a second. We got Landis here, who is the academic side of the Watson Springs. So we're and hopefully we're going to see his lab in a second too. But we just uh, took a lot of the pecan that we dried at their kiln, which they built themselves. Where did these doors come from again? It's an old uh, textile mill, the panels did. The insulated pan metal panels. Insulated panels. Mill that was taken down they heat it with a heat pump, not with just a gas torch. We got these railroad systems that the whole thing slides out. It's very, very cool. Um, so as you can see, we filled up our truck and I don't really want to talk too much about the wood that is mine that we're gonna put into the house. What I wanna talk about is these guys. So let's go ahead and take a tour. How long have you been here, Richard? Uh, 30 years. 30 years, and you just keep on adding to this place. Yeah, that's right, just cut a hole and put another building on. You just cut a hole in the wall with a chainsaw and then add more stuff. Yeah. What do you think? We need more tools. Just so we can see what we do with all this stuff. This is, these are things that Richard has made. That's uh, cast iron. Is this cast iron, the bird here? Bronze, cast bronze. This is a sculpture that he made, a little wood carving. And you just had a free day where you hurt your foot. <laughs> Can you, so we do welding, because you know, what workshop is complete without a welder? Can you show us the secret room back here? What's that thing? This is the forge, the coal forge. And you built that yourself? Yeah, that's right. And then you taught yourself how to be a blacksmith? Well, I've, I've gotten guidance from various folks and a lot of, uh, a lot of trial and error. And the first thing you told me that you do when you're a blacksmith is you build... You make your own tools. And so, like, well, so, so as an example, are these shears, is that it? Uh, every, well, shears, but as well as, you know, your, your shovels, your pokers, um, your... Uh, Coal shovels, you know, things like that. All the things that you need to. Uh, that is just so slick with. that you make your own tools. Yeah, yeah. And that teaches you how to do everything. I'm gonna go wide here because this room is just too crazy. Yeah, uh, and then you've got another, is this a? That's a gas forge. Okay. I'm gonna take that out of when I'm doing production work. Um, most of the time when I'm doing just one offs or stuff like that, I'll work with coal. Um, it has a lot, a lot more pinpoint heating uh, than the gas forge would have. And so how long does it take you to get that thing up to temperature? I can get that up probably in about 10 minutes or so. Crazy. And you got a little blower down yeah, here just a to blower down here. turbocharge it? Keeps it and kicks it up. That's awesome. Super, super cool. Does it get hot in this room? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, do you have a will? A what? Do you have a will? Yes, I do. I, I filled mine out. I got to say it was one of the most upsetting days in my entire life. I realized like, what is going to happen to this place? And I, I collect stuff too, but not, I mean, this is like, do you think about that? What happens? Uh, maybe once in blue, maybe, but you know, after I'm gone, it really doesn't matter that much yeah. to me. Uh, it's, uh, these tools don't do anything unless there's somebody doing it. It would make me sad that all of my stuff would just turn into money sold at some estate sale and then it's like yeah but you know i bought this from somebody else yeah it yeah. turned into money for somebody else i mean i bought a lot of used tools and, uh -huh. and estate sales and somebody's past you know i've got their tools yeah. and the way i look at it is i picked it up and i'm carrying it on yeah. but again it it doesn't do anything unless there's somebody behind it yeah i had a client buy this one from me and I liked it so much, it was kind of hard for me to let go of That's it. So beautiful. I decided to make another one. How did uh, you do that? That's all hammer work. It's You're just, crazy. You, know, you just take a hammer and you get these little little markings from the hammer. That looks exactly, it looks like you took a cast. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. <laughs> it's 
like you get the texture and then you, you put the push-pull into it, you know, where you get the volume created by, uh, you got the texture and then you take it to a uh, wooden, wooden stump and use a hammer to, to get it to bulb out to give you the depth and the loop. <laughs> Amazing. I love that your wood shop has a chandelier. Every wood shop needs a chandelier. <laughs> In a sailboat. <laughs> Whoa, what is this? This is a burl that I'm working on and I'm making a table out of it, a coffee table. Cool. Oh man, that is awesome. It's redwood, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's a redwood knee. Oh. And so I'm going to end up doing a, a, a blacksmith base for it. Uh -huh. And it'll be suspended like this with a glass top on top oh. of it. Wow. And then we covered up this. This machine, last time I was here, Richard had it uncovered. And I looked at it and I thought, after having seen everything on the front side, I was like, did he build that machine? But I didn't want to ask because then he might say, no, I didn't build it. And then I would be disappointed and he would feel bad. But of course he said immediately, yeah, the, oh, I uh, built this, which I love. Well, those pieces over there. there you go. So you can do plastic cast, basically. Is that yeah. what it? Yeah. Huh. Like you, you put molds in. Is this a plastic cast too? No, that's a carving I did out of cedar. You did car, this is carving? I did that when I was in high school. He did it when he was in high school. God damn it. Look at this piece of furniture that he built. Uh, can, can I, is yeah. this okay? Yeah. He's basically building museums. Oh, wow. Spike Go ahead and do it. Those are the ones that are, these are the better ones. Hey. Oh, put all the really are these yours or for a client? No, it's for a client. Amazing. Oh, look at that. Fish, fish hooks. Check out his website, too. It's Arsrader. Mm -hmm. What's the website? It's Arsrader.com. Um, okay. Arsrader.com. There will be a link. Trader without a C. That's right. That's pretty pointy, <laughs> Richard. Really this is not a decoration. What no, are you doing it's here? Not. It's not. I'm playing. I'm learning. I'm teaching, I'm teaching myself. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. I'm teaching myself. Yeah. I like the snakes, the spurs. Mm -hmm. Anybody need some spurs? Everybody needs a snake spur. Everybody needs a snake spur. That's railroad time. Yeah. No way, really? Yeah. 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 Huh. This ended up, this was a crowbar. And I had a client come in and wanted some flutes cut into a column that he had. It was a, a repair job on the front porch. And it was an old style, so there was no coves that I could find that would be able to cut it. So I went ahead and made a tool, the exact shape that I needed, so I was yeah. able to scrape out the flute and get it exactly the right shape. Yeah. So being able to make your own tools to oh, yeah. do exactly what you need to do is pretty nice. Sure. You know what the uh, today version of this, when you read the magazine racks in the grocery store is, right? You take a pallet or a stack of pallets and you build a tiny house out of it. <laughs> Craftsmanship, <laughs> Richard. <laughs> it's hard for a dad to be visiting a craftsman shop like this and see something like this and not know whether this is handmade and, and a piece of art that should be in a museum or something that you could potentially afford for your kids because it's awesome. It's a piece of art, by the way. Say that again. Say it again. I said I ended up making a bark plywood wall and I it was out of um, poplar bark and we used this to glue up each panel. This table is not just a table, it's a press. We had about 10 people working in here. Wow. Uh, and so it was um, exactly nine staircases exactly. in this house. Putting so we manufactured and all the parts. Circular? Uh, a point where uh, really yeah, one starts at the, the grand staircase, of course. Yes. very curved, it comes up from the basement, so and then on up to the second no floor. Um, Watchthesprings.com, you'll see photos pits. of that. The staircase was so huge, it was hard to get a whole photo of it because you just couldn't back up enough to, to so see it. But there were nine staircases in the house, 
And so we made all the, the treads, the balusters, the rails, everything had to be hand carved. This is a person's house, a human being's house, not a state. $50 million home is some of the numbers we've heard. Wow. And um, the architect was very picky, had to be quarters on old um, part pine. So we were bringing the beams down here. We set up a beam mill outside. We would, we would make a jig so that we could cut all the parts quarters on. Uh -huh. Everything had to be hand carved. That would he didn't want joints like you do a, or a split rail right? like you do a curved right. rail now. He wanted it all hand carved all the way up, newel on the bottom on either side, and then just flew it all the way around. So it was a challenge. Wow. Um, we also did the elevator floor. That elevator floor, <laughs> you could buy a nice vehicle for what it cost to do that elevator floor because it had inlaid uh, roses in each corner with pink ivory, green poplar, each vein in the poplar was turned like this for the leaves so that you get that right look. Wow. And, and, and they look like they're just coming right out of the floor. You look at it, and you, you feel like you can reach down and pick yourself a rose. Wow. We even did the heat and air registers because the architect wanted them to match the base. Huh. So they had to match the base, and Richard makes a mold. Some of them were poured with polyurethane, but some of them yeah. had to be made out of wood because some of them were part pine base. Yeah. And so those we had to make out of, out of wood. And uh, it took a couple of years to do it. Yeah. And so right. That's just the finished carpentry too. That's not. That's yeah. not even just the house being built. No, it took it took six or seven years to build the house. Right. And um, so yeah, we had we had a lot of people in here working. And a lot of people on the field working and coordinating the whole thing. It was a, it was quite the project. This mm. is a, um, so, but now, time. you know, I, yeah. I do a yeah. lot of what I do is so in my shop yeah. over there. I mean, it's a long way With, uh, from here to there. You know, like a, so that's, and, uh, that's a stair tread from a $50 million house. And the thing, but you, but you, what you wanted to point out was it's a sh it's piece of plywood. Floor. Quarter inch of heart pine, it was nosed with heart pine, and then quarter inch heart pine top and bottom. That thing has been around the barn, it's been just abused, and it's still just as flat as can be. Mm -hmm. And that big in stair trays, I think that's the only way to do it. We've done countertops that way. Uh, Amici's downtown Athens, we did all their tabletops that way. Um, it's, a, it's really a nice method. This has been up for uh, two years now. Exposed. In full sun. Full, full sun. Where is that thin little thing? Oh, this one is interesting. It makes a sound. Where is that thin little thing? That thin. That's uh, this one right here. Yeah. This is the commercial tech, yeah. Oh, that's commercial. No, we don't. No, have... I think that's what you use. No, no, no. We didn't. We used the thinner oh, one. The Real thinner one. Thin. I don't think it's up here. Okay. It didn't, it... Yeah, well, this, but, is the, this is the commercial tank. But right? our house is super, super, yeah. super airtight. Yeah. So it looked not great, but that's yeah. got the this stuff, I was honestly a little on. worried about this stuff too, but it, it performed fine. I mean, that's the thing yeah. it, with the blower door test. It was, oh yeah, yeah, it does, it does great. You know, it's more how you build mm -hmm. than anything. That's 99% of it. Right. I mean, that's the great thing and the sad thing, right? Cardboard, you know, and so... 90% of this is you give a good surface that tape will bond to, you're there. Yeah. And then after that, it's how you build with it. If you if you don't build properly and you let moisture get to it and you let moisture sit on it, I don't care what you build with. It's going to rot. It's yeah. going to be problems. So. You know, what was funny was the, the tape, you know, we started trying to put this down with something that was hard and had an edge. Uh-huh. And this stuff has got enough of a texture. Boy, you just had to take a rag and kind of work it in. Yeah. Even the smooth yeah. side. Yeah. The yeah, difference yeah, between yeah. GP and so yeah. the difference between force field and zip is that zip, the membrane is on the rough side. G, force field, the membrane is on the smooth side. But even the smooth side of OSB, it's not no. a piece of glass. Uh, there's a screen side in the manufacturing process. And because zip is made in a primary process, the, the overlay is put on while they're doing the OSB. So they roll it out on the mat. They build up the flakes on top of it. It goes in a press. It comes out. It's done. Where this is done, the panels are made, and then the overlay is put on it. Mm -hmm. So it's a different process. And yeah. because the the panel's made and the overlay's put on, it can be put on to the smooth side as opposed to the screen yeah. side. 
So just in the process of making the OSB, the screen is on the bottom. Yeah. And when you roll the paper on the bottom, it does that. Louisiana Pacific makes a product. They do the same thing, but they also make a product, you know, their siding. that They put it on the top side with call plates to give it the um, wood grain hmm. texture. So they have what they call hanging calls that they yeah. can just hang on the platens when they mash it and it gives it that texture. One log. <laughs> one log. Good job. Not one tree, one log. It's been here about two years uh -huh. and uh, it's still got a ways to go. By lightning, it jumped over to this wall and it just blew studs out. All right. it, was, it was incredible. Do you still have that where the nails? Because I remember you. Well, I don't know. You showed me, and I, I started could, thinking about how the yeah, nails. You see, like right here, where it came through that nail and it split this stud right here. Wow. It's amazing. And if you would see an area where there's a gang of nails, especially uh -huh. is where it would come through, and all that gang of nails, and this is enough force of that electricity that just blew it apart. So, a house that's been hit by lightning likely is just in shambles behind the. You would, you would think. Behind the wall. You board. would think I've replaced some of it. Here's but, some. Know, there's, a, right. there's a section where there was a gang of nails. All right, and it just exploded. And it blew that whole header and everything out. Just oh, bam! Wow. It was all that stuff was just laying around here. Am I allowed um, to put this on camera? Of a storm panel. Am I allowed to put this on camera? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Do that again. <laughs> I'll do better than that. We'll come out here with a ball peen hammer and let me throw a hammer at it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is. A panel that has really a good resistance. I mean, that's that's pretty hard. Yep. And so I just kind of wow. Okay. All right. I see what we're talking about. That's so, I thought. That's covering second. your window for a storm panel. Huh. Wow. And you're developing this. Can I get it clear? I'm I'm not developing the panel. The panel is a that's actually a downgrade panel. There's a company in Wisconsin called Interfacial that makes it. And uh, they make it for the cargo van industry. They put it in the floors of cargo vans. But they're very picky about that. So they have some downgrade, which is really good. And so they sent me a unit of it to come up with other ideas of what to do with it. And this seems to be one of the yeah. better ideas so far is a storm panel. We've taken it to um, Intertech and had it tested where they shoot two by fours at it, do the missile impact test. And a two by four just bounce right off of it. Wow. OSB go right through it. So, you know, just looking at it as, say, hey, when OSB is $27 a sheet, mm -hmm. you can afford to buy this right here, put it on your windows. And it's more done, than OSB, I imagine. Put it up, and it'll last you a lifetime. Yeah. It, it costs more than OSB, though, just to be clear, right? It's going to cost more than OSB. Yeah. And okay. OSB is $5 a sheet. Go buy you some OSB and throw it up there and then throw it away when you're done. <laughs> if you want something that you could cut and put up, yeah. this will last your lifetime right here. Hmm. And so, you know, this is one of those panels. Help me figure out something else to do with it. Yeah, sure. I'll, I will think about it, actually. That's pretty cool. What can you do with it? It, it won't make a good sheet. It's not breathable enough. Okay. And I would not put it on my house as sheets. And even though I've done it in here, I wouldn't put it as an exterior sheet on a house. I think you would have trouble with that. Hopping gladly. That's uh, recycled glass. Oh, cool. They put it in a kiln, heat it up, melt it, and add a foaming agent to it. So it's very lightweight. It is very light. I like it. I mm. kind of want to put it in my mouth. I is just uh, I just dyed this, so you may get a little dung if you handle it. But uh, So I go with different colors, and, huh. you know, for like succulents and things like that. They bring me, they want me to put it up, they photograph it, and then they let me keep it. And then I do stupid stuff with it. Huh. This is the... Uh, this is the interfacial panel, you know, right? Makes bends nice for yeah. gothic oh, style arches and stuff like that. Yeah. You know. And then we're doing some fluid applied stuff uh, on the way. That's up. just paint. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I suspect everything in here has to do something with building science. <laughs> that's great. Awesome. Thank you for the tour.